Real question. Before one week ago, did any of you know about a YouTube channel called Miranda Sings? I guess thing is what, 50-50? Kind of hard to tell. Chat's moving pretty quick and I can't see. Huge YouTube channel. The woman's name is Colleen Ballinger. Ballinger? Ballinger? I don't really care. Big content creator. Not just a content creator, by the way. A lot of people know her for the YouTube channel Miranda Sings, but uh, she's got a Netflix show. She was featured in... Um, Ralph Saves the Internet. Did you know that? That's real. Wait, hold on. Classic likeness. Well, you'll recognize her. Uh, you'll recognize her shortly because we're about to uh, watch a video of hers. So, <clears throat> if you're anything like me, you didn't really know who this woman was. In retrospect, I've heard a few things about her. I've heard some positive, some negative. Seemed like she did like mostly kids stuff. Did stuff for kids. Did a lot of stuff with kids. You know, there are a lot of YouTubers like that. That's not like anything unique or, or special. Her negative stuff, like her being crazy. I don't know, white woman syndrome. Then people started posting on, on Twitter the other day about her apologizing for drama that she'd gotten into. And it was her method of apology that attracted significant attention. I'll just bring this 2.8 million view apology video entitled hi period all lowercase right here it's 10 minutes 19 seconds you know it's a the a, a, a meaty apology video now normally when you take a look at an apology video well first you want to know like what the context is right well what, what are they apologizing for like what who's mad at them and why what happened but in this case i think it's actually better like spiritually for us to experience this the way that I did, just no knowledge, no no context, diving right into this, which, I mean, let me know if you can see any red flags right off the bat. Unmute the video. Again, no knowledge going in. That's how we're experiencing this, okay? We'll talk about the context after. But I want you to glean as much info as you can purely off of, like, we're, we're reducing youtuber apology video analysis down to first principles okay we're doing the equivalent of like could you build a circuit or like a microconductor uh if you were stranded on a desert island we're, we're trying to build this up from the very beginning we're going back to basics that's also a youtube channel oh yeah Before a word is said. Let's go. Hey, it's been a while since you saw my face. I haven't been doing so great, so I took a little break. So a lot of people are saying some things about me that aren't quite true. It doesn't matter if it's true, though. Just as long as it's entertaining to you. Right off the bat, right off the bat, is it the uke for 10 minutes? It's the uke for 10 minutes, baby. Right off the bat, we have the repudiation. People are saying things about me. They're not true, but hey, as long as you're having fun, delivered in ukulele form. This episode of Steven Universe has a weird intro. God, the, the ukulele is such a funny instrument. It's, it's, it's such an innocent instrument on its own, but the associations that it has cultivated are just, um, just so fantastic. But here, no, here, yeah. All of it. We're watching all of it. Right? You guys having fun? All aboard the toxic gossip train. You're chugging down the tracks of misinformation, the toxic gossip train. This is me. You got a one-way ticket to manipulation station. Toxic gossip train. Tie me to the tracks and harass me for my past. Cause rumors that 
like facts if you don't mind the gaps that won't survive in the crash but hey at least you're having fun okay i'm not gonna give you guys full context but basically she's like gislaine maxwell so that's what we're listening to it's like if gislaine maxwell was not impugned in the court system and was fighting in the court of public opinion uh, hi everyone i've been wanting to come online and talk to you about a few things um even though my team has strongly advised me to not say what i want to say I recently realized that they never said that I couldn't sing what I want to say. So. <laughs> Me to my legal team every time I boot up a stream and have something to say about the online left. Me before the thoughts time stream. Said I shouldn't say this, but uh, they didn't say I couldn't yell it. talk about the facts so I hope that you'll be willing to listen here we go many years ago I'm ready. I used to message my fans uh, but not in a creepy way like a lot of you are trying to suggest oh, it's no. more of a loser kind of way oh, no, I was no, just no, trying no, to no, be no. besties with everybody it's kind of like uh, when you go to like a family gathering and there's a weird aunt there who keeps coming up to you and going like, hey girl, what's the tea? And you're like, Ugh. Um, that was me. But in group chats with my fans. It was weird. I've been sharing my life online for over 15 years. I've poured my heart out to you and because of that I feel like I'm talking to my friends. But in the beginning of my career, I didn't really understand that maybe there should be some boundaries there. There were times in the DMs when I would overshare details of my life, which was really weird of me. Do you think, do you think it all would have went down better for me if I'd taken <coughs> this route? <coughs> oh God. Was this it? Was this the solution? To be clear, the stuff that she's done is actually probably like FBI, like open up, knock down doors, like multi-house raid, the whole thing, you know, like the, the, the full information, like, no, no, it's, <laughs> it's really bad. Which is why this is so funny. I haven't done that for years, you see, because I changed my behavior and I took accountability. But that's not very interesting, is it? So let's go on the toxic gossip train. The locomotive's fueled with hateful accusations. I love this Toxic train. gossip train. Steamroll over someone's reputation. Toxic gossip train. Hop on board but close your eyes. Otherwise you'll realize that the train is made of lies. And that person you despise maybe didn't deserve to die. But hey, at least you're having fun. In all seriousness, I do think it's really important to hold people accountable for their mistakes. Um, you know, we should hope that everyone can learn from their mistakes and grow and change their behavior and be a better person. And this is something that I've always tried to do when I make mistakes, and it's something that I will continue to try to do. What? Oh, you don't care? Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you wanted me to take accountability, but that's not the point of your mob mentality, is it? No. Yeah, if I, if I was a woman, this would have been my response to every drama spat i would have gotten into online like this would have happened like 40 or 50 times like every time i have a disagreement it's a uh, all no caps punctuation at the end youtube video where i bring up the musical instrument and sing my feelings out certified hood classic okay if you weren't if you weren't born in the streets you don't understand okay this is conflict management at an organic level that you just don't get. Your goal is to ruin the life of the person you despise while you dramatize your lies and monetize their demise. Yeah. Um, I feel like I can already hear the comments on this video. She's gaslighting, manipulating. Oh, she's a narcissist and a rat. I would never make a mistake like that. Okay, wait, to, to be fair, even without knowing anything, if you responded any kind of allegations in this format it's the hague for you like 
unironically watching this and like the dread building because i watched this at first without knowing anything about her like last night so it's like at first like okay well maybe she's like an awkward white bitch like whatever okay the ukulele white woman whatever like nobody's perfect uh maybe she's just cringe i don't know but then like the mounting dread as you realize even with no context like Every, just from the apology video on its own with no other information 50 years in prison you know and not because it's cringe because it, it it's because it makes her look like a psychopath like actually a psychopath like the level of narcissism which she calls out correctly here that you would need even without knowing anything about the allegations the level of narcissism or, 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 or self-absorption or whatever that you would need to possess in order to think that this was a good idea, it just, it betray, <laughs> especially for somebody who's been doing this for 15 years. She's had a Netflix show. Like, we're not dealing with, like, a youthful naivete here. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize that all of you are perfect, so please criticize me. Bring out the daggers made from your perfect past and stab me repeatedly in my bony little back. I'm sure you're disappointed in my shitty little song. I know you wanted me to say that I was 100% in the wrong. Well, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna take that route of admitting to lies and rumors that you made up for clout. She's talking about the victims of uh, grooming there. Just again, we're adding a little bit of context here. The, the people she's saying the shitty little lies you made up for clout. She's referring to the uh, grooming victims who came forward. Someone new to harass. She did some things that I do not like in her past. So everybody gather around because we're about to attack. But not based on facts. Oh no. Your loaded lethal weapon is your fingers on the keys. You don't need any armor when you can hide behind a screen. So shoot me down quick. Reputations deceased. Uh, I also wanted to take a minute to talk about that girl Miranda sings. You know the one. Yeah, her. Uh, she's PG-13. It says that on my website, and it's always been that way. And that's why you won't find my videos on the YouTube Kids app. Anyway, um, I didn't realize it was my responsibility to decide what was appropriate for every kid to see. I've always relied on parents to decide if they're comfortable with their families watching my YouTube videos or coming to my live shows. Have I made some jokes in poor taste? Yes. Have I made lots of dumb mistakes? Yes. Am I sad that there are some fans who feel betrayed? Yes. But was my intention to manipulate? No. It doesn't really matter what my intention was, because it seems as though- Kind of a banger though, right? On that. Like really though, you, right? It's not very fun have millions of people all over Very the world catchy. call you the most vile, horrendous, disgusting, life-ruining words that a person can be called, in my opinion. Um, it doesn't matter that these things aren't true. Uh, everyone just believes that you are the type of person who manipulates and abuses children. So I just wanted to say that... Um, the only thing I've ever groomed is my two Persian cats. I'm not a groomer. I'm just a loser who didn't understand I shouldn't respond to fans. And I'm not a predator, even though a lot of you think so. Because five years ago... I I'm telling you, man, if this is the route that I had taken, everything would have played out different. People, they, people, uh, you grew you zoo fowler. <laughs> <laughs> it I'm telling you, it would have worked out for me. People couldn't have said that I have white woman energy because I'm actually a man. Made a fart joke. I do that too. Colleen Ballinger to her PR team the other day. Oh, Christ.
I didn't realize it was even a conversation. I always assumed we would be heavily in. I'd definitely write a song about how we, we do not diddle kids. Do not diddle kids. It's no good diddling kids. There is no quicker way for people to think that you are diddling kids than by <laughs> writing a song about it. You gotta write a song that says, Ooh, I wouldn't do it with anybody younger than my daughter. No little kids gotta be big, older than my wife, younger than my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Banger. Even though I know this video won't change anyone's mind about me. I still felt it was important to come on here and defend myself a little and take accountability. And I also wanted to say that to anyone out there who has ever supported me in any capacity. It, I just want to be clear, just really, really quickly. Everything we're about to talk about is so much worse than you guys think it is. I really, really appreciate you. Thank you. What it's worth? I never had any bad intentions. But I do feel like shit. Toxic gossip train Jogging down the tracks of this information, toxic gossip train. You got a one-way ticket to manipulation station, toxic gossip train. You tied me to the tracks and harassed me. Everyone, come on now, everyone. Rumors look Wait. like facts when you don't mind the gaps. Do the chorus. I won't survive in the crash, but hey. I hope you had some fun. We are, but... God damn it! Actually, you know... <gasps> Everyone now! I feel like maybe I should let you guys know something. Um... Like Encore. Maybe you're confused about something. I don't know. Let me try to help. Um sometimes people yeah. make a mistake uh. and it doesn't make them a horrible person. Whoa. Sometimes people can make a mistake and they're still a good person. Crazy. I know. Sometimes people can make a mistake and you don't have to take that mistake. Oh no. And twist it up and grind it and add some lies to it and pulverize it and stab it with knives and ruin a life. And no. Sometimes people can make a mistake. It doesn't mean you gotta send them hate. Oh no. Sometimes people can make a mistake and you can kindly let them know and help them to grow. Sometimes people make mistakes simply because they made a mistake. And that mistake doesn't make them a terrible human. Okay. It just makes them a human. What do I know? So even with no context, I think you could safely assume she's done something on the level of, like, uh, war crimes. Well, kind of. So basically, she's been doing this for a while. She's been doing the uh, content circuit for, like, 15 years. You know, to be honest, this is still kind of like an ongoing thing against her. <clears throat> the spread of allegations has been so broad. I mean, there have been so many things said about her, so many of which have been verified, by the way, that like to go over all of them would be impossible for me with my cough. You can check out Demon Mama's deep dive. She spent uh, eight hours going over everything. I believe H3, Ethan Klein, also has as a... As a uh, <clears throat> stuff on it but i'll i'll touch on the 
I'll touch on the subject, you know? I'm happy to go into it a little bit. What we just watched, that was Colleen Ballinger. Colleen Ballinger is known primarily for the character known as Miranda Sings. Yeah. Miranda Sings plays, uh, or, or it's, it's, a, it's a character. It's like this histrionic, obnoxious, YouTube bullshit that appeals to 12-year-olds. Let's take a look at the thumbnails. It is immediately understandable what the deal is here. So this is what the character looks like. It's like a 45-year-old <laughs> woman. 40, I don't know. I don't know how old she is. Whatever. And she's like an annoying on purpose. You've seen this. Mid-30s? Okay, whatever. Yeah, lots of stuff here. Anyway, she really is quite popular. Main channel, over 10 million subs. Netflix show. She's just shockingly influential. And uh, she's also Ghislaine Maxwell. I'm very sorry to say she grooms minors and she feeds them to the pedos. Uh, here's, here's what's known. Because like this is like uh, an ongoing, everyone's coming forward with allegations kind of dealio. But here's, here's the dealio, all right? So it seems like for an unknown length of time, but certainly earlier and possibly to now in terms of her career, she would have inappropriate conversations with underage fans who would message her. Apparently, this would include, like, you know, asking, are you a virgin, that kind of stuff. But the really inappropriate stuff was between, uh, among other people, underage fans of Colleen and her brother. So a couple of text messages from, I think his name's Trent, Trent Ballinger, Ballinger. There have been messages between him and other people that have been corroborated, shown on video, that look pretty bad. Apparently, this one was confirmed in the form of, like, a screen recording of a video showing who it was. But, uh, this is a, a classic text conversation. I'm always texting the bitches like this. This is the opening, right? Okay, just don't share our conversation with anyone. Anything we talk about stays between you and I. Oh, okay, don't worry, thanks. This is, this is a classic opening right here, okay? And then, of course, you follow it up with the I'm told not to talk to people under 18 grimacing emoji. Now, that one right there, you can't leave that one out, okay? It's how you let the bitches know that you're sensitive and thoughtful. Uh, it goes on for a while. The Riz Lord. Yeah. That's how you approach them. Apparently, this person was like 12 at the time. The basic pattern seemed to be Colleen, the ukulele lady, right? would find underage fans and pull them in with her incredible like fame and popularity and then direct them towards group chats where there would be other adults, most prominently her pedophile brother, who would sexually harass or abuse them. So, so Colleen used her fame to, to lure and then bring them into group chats. There was some stuff that was gone over in the H3 video and therefore therefore by like ex you know uh, by transitive property the dm video where like there's a screenshot of a group chat with colleen and a bunch of minors and all of the minors have like tampons in their mouths it was like um <clears throat> dan schneider shit like the nickelodeon guy where it's like you know hey my name's dan schneider can all the 11 year old girls in the audience send me feet pics like that that kind of thing there is a lot it was called Kalini's Weenies. Thank you for that information. I appreciate it. But this, the, the, this is one of those, like, <clears throat> in retrospect, how did this not get found out kind of things? Because there's like this tidal wave of information now where it's like, hey, she's been doing this Ghislaine shit <clears throat> for a while, like really obviously. So just to like indicate that, okay? Let me see if I can't, uh, let me see if I can't, uh, Show this video real quick. So Colleen Ballinger, ukulele lady, does live shows that a ton of kids attend because that was, I mean, that's her audience, right? The kids. It's not like it's an audience full of 30-year-olds. And uh, apparently, oh, sorry, Vosh, it was a group chat of 23, 13 to 17-year-olds called Colleen's Weenies. And there was another called Corey's Corey being an adult in the space who later sent the kids 
Gotcha, Vermin. Thank you. Wholesome group chats. Uh, many such cases, I'm sure, on Epstein's Island. We'll, we'll put a pin in that. In the live shows that Colleen would do, she would have a segment. I'm just going to read the... I'm just going to read the tweet. I'm just, I'm reading the tweet. Trigger warning, slut shaming, objectification of minors. Colleen Ballinger bringing minors on stage in front of an audience full of children to objectify them and slut shame them for what they are wearing in a segment where the punchline is comparing them to porn. Uncomfortable to watch. So the the bit apparently was that she would have a bit where she would encourage a or the most scantily clad person that she could find in the audience, which was almost always a minor because it's a show full of kids, and go up and comment on their outfits being scantily clad. And ob the obvious consequence of this is that if it's known that she'll pull you up for wearing a scantily clad outfit, that kids would deliberately dress down so that the adult Colleen could pull them up there to give them attention for being scantily clad. And that apparently, like, some of these kids would end up in the group chats. Because, like, that's the grooming, right? It's like, here's the segment in my live show for children where, like, who, who's the sluttiest in the audience, right? Who's the biggest slut here? Get on up here. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. You, that's so cool. Wow. You know, like, it's really obvious, right? Like, it's, it's one of those things where it's, like, this. some of these videos are, like, from 2016. Yeah, they were, she, yeah, was getting people to, like, self-select for grooming, basically. Not that the kids knew. Like, they don't know. They're kids. They're idiots. They don't know. Kids aren't even people. They're like amoebas. But, like, what is, like, I, you know, this girl's, like, what, I don't know, like, 15 or whatever? But, like, you can imagine, because cause kids, like, the attention of, a, of an idol, like, if you're a kid, like, getting the attention of your idol, that's everything, right? I mean, it's that way for a lot of adults, too. So, like, a kid making clothing choices to attract the attention of an adult by a way of dressing as scantily as they can get away with without their parents keeping them from leaving. I mean, you understand, right? So this happened a lot. Like a lot, a lot, a lot. I think we get the point. Yeah, the video's done. But this happened a lot. Only recently has this information started to come together. And this is always, <laughs> this is always how it is in situations like this, right? Really obvious in retrospect. Once one bit of info comes out, it all comes out. It's like uh, Bill Cosby, right? Like 50 trillion people accused him all at once. That's not a coincidence. The reason it all happened at once is because as soon as one person pops the lid off that, everyone's like, wow, well, shit, me too, right? You know, literally me too. That's the, that's the point of the phrase. There, at this point, there have been so many, like, messages that have come out or like like screenshots or people saying ayo like i talked to these two the sister and the brother back like in 2018 when i was younger and then like they invited me to the group chat or whatever there's a ton of it coming out. i'm sorry i'm trying not to cough whenever i pause it's because I'm, I'm trying to not cough really loud vermin what did you send me here cory known as the adult who was hanging out in the minor chats but also had their own chat called cory's Oof, corroborated all these things five years late, only out of spite. Rope. Oh, that's right. The Another adult who was part of the grooming circle uh, corroborated a ton of stuff so they could release it out of spite whenever they had a falling out with the uh, the Ballinger siblings. That's right. Wrote rape fan fiction of living children and adults in the community and may have been the one to have sent kids porn in the group chat under the guise of, haha, guys, this is so weird. Look what was on my timeline. Trent, Colleen's brother. Self-admitted to a child he's not supposed to be around or talking to children, that his family knows this, became strangely possessive of a child Fanny singled out to groom he was talking about having sex with, impregnating, 
and that he, a trans boy, would look good pregnant after repeatedly trying to convince him he's not bisexual or trans. That's great. <clears throat> That's, um, I feel like there's like more every, <clears throat> every day. Is there evidence Miranda knew about this or did the dude just take advantage of the group chats? No, she knew. She was in these, in these group chats. No, she was, she was fully aware. This is, this is literally just like, um, <clears throat> she, she benefited both in the sense that she obviously enjoyed preying on children, uh, and she also probably enjoyed the attention. Uh, you can probably tell from the ukulele bit that she is a insecure narcissist uh, and a psychopath, and probably the type of person who needs constant affirmation. Many such cases in YouTube. Her brother just seems to be like an outright pedo. I don't know if she's a pedo. What was the pretense with the brother's involvement? I don't know what you mean by pretense. I, 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 I think because you, if you're like a celebrity, you can just say like, whoa, you're 13 and you're in the secret group call with Miranda Sings. You're, you get to be in the like private DMs of this like big YouTuber sensation and you get to meet her brother. Whoa. And the brother's like, ha wouldn't it be, wouldn't, wouldn't it be funny if you show me your, your feet? And you're like, oh, that's kind of weird, but whoa, like, this is how it goes. This is, this is how it is. This every time with these grooming stories, though, this is like very expansive and it's been going on for so long. Bosh, didn't she send underage fans her panties? Like literally, I don't know. She did so much stuff. I couldn't commit it all to memory. I can barely remember what I had for breakfast. Did you know there's a Rolling Stones article? Yeah, there's a Rolling Stone. She did send a child her lingerie. Okay, gotcha. Yes, there's a Rolling Stone. There's been an article on everything. It's huge news. She's not just a regular YouTuber. Thread of things Trent Ballinger, a man in his 30s, sent to me when I was 13 to 14. I hope this thread is safe for work. Oh, this is the, the text log. He was always sending pics of me to me, especially this pic. I made, I think I made you pop out more Peapod. I pictured you wearing these when meeting him, grimacing face. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's I, I feel like those messages are more pedophilic than just stating, like, that he was a file. you know what I mean? That, I think I made you pop out more Peapod is more pedophilic than if he'd said, <clears throat> In accordance with U.S. Code uh, 13-C, I have to admit that, or I have to acknowledge the fact that I am, in fact, a, 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 a incarcerated sex offender. Like, I, it's actually more to type this out. Incredible. And here's a picture with Peapod that's been added to this. That got, okay. Um, told me it looked like uh, it was XGF. He never wanted me to go to sleep. When Blank said, and thank God did it with Peapod, makes it sound like you two had sex. Grimacing face, grimacing face, grimacing face, grimacing face, grimacing face. Oh, grimacing face. No, it's one of Tim's song lyrics. Laughing, crying emoji. Says she couldn't without you and thank you. Sounds like you two are a couple, lol. Text. Uh-huh, sure. Just saying it sounded like you and her were gay together, lol. Oh, oops, lol, no, just the lyrics. Uh-huh. Are you enjoying it? Truly phenomenal stuff. Oh. Dude, you know you're in when the girl hits you with this line. Hey, I really appreciate it, but I don't feel like it's appropriate for me to text you and don't think my mom would want me to either. I'm really sorry. When you hear that one, that's how you know she loves you. That's the classic right there, folks. The rizzed up. That's how you know, okay? You've planted the riz seeds. You've watered the Riz saplings, and now you've got a big old f***ing Riz fruit. Colleen once went where your vagina in front of a gay, deaf, gig. I'm like, Ugh, don't have one. Guy, not gig. I don't know, man. Judging from these texts, I feel like that between this guy and a 16-year-old, like, this guy would actually be the one getting raped. Because it seems like he has the mental faculties of like an eight year old. Yeah, is he ret like actual. Like, oh, like, yeah, f cops busting down the door to arrest the uh, the 12 year old he's talking to because this guy has like the mental capacity of an amoeba. He comments like a kid on YouTube. I'm making jokes, but 
in in reality, parents very often talk like children, either because they're mentally regressed or because uh, it's part of the grooming strategy. Like they deliberately model the way they talk to people off of how they see kids talk because they're trying to appeal or like be cool and relatable or whatever. However, he also does seem so. I mean, it's it, kind of like a mixed bag. Wow, yeah, seriously. Or how this looks wrong. Marshmallow fluff. No, I, okay, wait, I'm actually, hold on. Who's the victim here? Okay? Because cause seriously, I feel like I could, I could tell this guy I'm a Nigerian prince and walk away with, like, all the money that he's been given by Miranda Sings. Us? We are? <laughs> yeah, true. This all groomer shit, too, getting the kid used to sex jokes and shit. Yeah, like, okay, leaving aside the power dynamics present here, like, the very specific power dynamics, hey, anyone here in chat ever earn the attention or affection of a creepy older person when they were in, like, middle or high school or something? You probably, like, a ton of you probably had, like, a experience with somebody who, um, would constantly make, like, weird haha but what if like what bah, but but what if really sex jokes with you like 24 7 with with like the deliberate uh <coughs> goal of trying to like numb you to them or whatever i had like three female friends who showed me texts from guys who liked them that treated them that way does that even happen to boys yeah boys can be groomed Oh, this was them confirming so it by going through the... For proof and... There's a show more replies? What? Oh, God. I think I need to shave. Glad I'm a girl so I don't have to deal with that. Ah, ha, ha. That's a lie. Oh, girls shave legs. Oh, yes, that's true. Some even shave. The hoo-ha. Wisdom. Good night. Now I'm 14. Four more years of your eight <laughs> <laughs> Guys, he's just teaching her math lessons. I don't know why people are being weird about it. You would look good, Preg, if you ever want children one day. Er, Can I just go er instead of grimacing face? Is this all the same person? Yes. Oh, and it's worth pointing out again that the relationship that Miranda Sings had with the whole, like, grooming kids to bring them into the back, the meet with the brother group chat, all that crap, that's been going on for years. This is one person, one single 13 to 14 year olds interactions with her brother <coughs> that opened with, <coughs> kill me, that opened with him being like, oh yeah, even further up because it went so long. Don't share a convo with anyone. I'm told not to talk to people under 18. So this has been going on for long enough that this guy, when messaging minors, opens with, hey, I message minors so often that, like, <laughs> I've been warned to not do this anymore, but, like, I'm gonna do it again right now. So this has probably happened hundreds of times, all facilitated knowingly by the Miranda Sings person who defended herself in the form uh, <coughs> of the ukulele solo that we had so much fun with. And I'll do it again. Exactly. There isn't evidence of her directly facilitating it. Oh, we have a defender in chat. Um, first of all, uh, yes, there is. She would uh, pull people into the group chats and like, engage with them and her brother how do you think her brother got in contact with her fans like how do you how do you think that happens for years and do weird sexual shit with them herself like and when uh when her brother says i'm told not to talk to people under 18 how do you think that she wouldn't know about that the sister didn't it, didn't at one point she make a comment like we don't invite my brother to the live shows didn't she say that isn't isn't that right there, evidence that she knows that he's a pedo? She said at one point, like, we don't bring my brother to the live shows, but then they did anyway. Do we have proof of her being bad at ukulele? I think she sounded fine. Musically speaking, in her apology video, you know, I was, I was dancing along, but 
Chat, maybe chat disagrees. I don't know. I could hear the pedo in her voice. <clears throat> you know, I'm sorry, my voice has fallen apart here. I apologize. I'm just trying not to cough really loud at the mic. I can't even hit the mute button fast enough because when you cough, you're like, you know, your your arms tend to seize up because because <coughs> you're coughing. Now, I cough as a defense mechanism to ward off the pedos who are otherwise very entranced by my youthful charm and good looks. I do think that this is worth talking about in a broader context because the specifics to this situation right here are full on Epstein shit, okay? This is like a coordinated years long effort to turn her content production into a grooming scheme to filter off the most groomable kids into this like backroom shit. You haven't even touched on how Miranda Sings used a 14 year old to run her Twitter account unpaid, Lamau. There's so much more. There's so much more stuff. My voice is going. I have to. There's so much shit, okay? But like this specific situation is, is a product of so much evil that uh this this isn't like an oh oopsie doopsie right but i want to talk for a moment about oopsie doopsies okay not about grooming children i don't think that's an oopsie doopsie at all i think that's a pretty deliberate bad you know that's not a mistake uh but about parasocial relationships because one of the excuses that uh colleen uses is the whole well i was an idiot and i didn't know how to maintain proper boundaries with my youthful fans that's bs this is a whole deliberate grooming thing. But let's talk hypothetically about like the subject she was using as an excuse or like the framework that she was trying to dive into to lessen the severity of the accusations, which is the parasociality thing. When I was just starting with the YouTube stuff, like a thousand subs or less or whatever, sometimes, I would just chat with people uh, on a, 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 a Twitter, like followers, uh, to like just say hello to them or whatever. None of these conversations were sexual or even like friendly. It was mostly like, oh, I noticed that you say you worked on this project in your bio. Was that cool? You know, uh, now from these conversations, nothing really interesting happened. And at the time, I was a small enough content creator that there wasn't really like this big like swell of energy towards me you know what i mean like messaging me at that point would it wouldn't have even have been like a niche internet micro celebrity it would have just been like oh this guy with a tiny youtube channel says hi i'll say hi whatever so everything was fine if i dm some fans who follow me now totally like impromptu a lot of them would lose their mind I've opened DMs on Twitter. I get a lot of DMs. And a lot of you are losing your mind without any engagement for me. I used to try to respond to all the DMs I get. Now I can't. I can't do that anymore. Try to respond to all the emails I get. Even that, I, I can't always do. You know, it's just not possible. Try to respond to the important ones. People DM me real nice stuff. I respond if it's fan art. You know? I respond if there's something really substantial. Sometimes people will message me and they'll be like, Hey, you got me out of a really dark place. Your content really helped me. Really appreciate what you've done for me, man. When I see stuff like that, I'm only human. My heart is soft. Oftentimes I respond, hey, I really appreciate that. Or just say like heart or something, because I'm sure they understand that I have a lot of DMs. So, you know, but I see it like I'm, I'm acknowledging I've seen your message and I appreciate it. Usually that's fine. 99% of the time that's fine. But sometimes, but sometimes, I'll give a heart, or I'll say, hey, I really appreciate that, glad I could be helpful. And I get a, I get a lot in return for that, because they've given a bit of attention to me, I gave them a bit back, and they're like, oh, it's on. The, I, the, the, the door has been opened, you know? They, they knock on my door, they thank me through the door. I open it up a crack so I can say, thank you. And they put their foot in the crack and they're like, ah, thank you for opening the, 
just trying to like force it open. Now, of course, the the benefit of of DMs as a format is that I can just not respond. You know, sometimes you 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 freaks, uh, you try to get my attention in in other more manipulative ways, like. Uh, talking about self-harm or personal unwellness or just sending me a bunch of nudes you know you 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 <coughs> you psychopaths now obviously i being a responsible an extremely well-tempered adult youtuber make an effort to not engage with the extreme emotions of the small portion of my fan base who would uh react negatively to perceived parasocial attention because I understand how substantial that attention can be. <coughs> it's torture talking without coughing, by the way. This is taking, like, everything I have. Like, a good example from my perspective, um, I don't feel like strong parasocial relationships with most people. I really like Joseph Anderson, the streamer and YouTuber. Very, very fond of him. But, um... Mostly, I think, because I appreciate his content. I don't think there's a strong imbalance there in terms of, like, perceived engagement. For me specifically, the closest example I would have to think of would be Destiny, right? Like, I wouldn't have gotten into the YouTube stuff if it weren't for the series of events that transpired by way of me being a part of uh, his community. And certainly, like, ten years ago, I, I, I thought quite highly of him. If that engagement was significant enough, to put me where I am now, you know, I can fully sympathize with uh, people having strong relationships with uh, content creators they follow. You know, perhaps even to the point where they might be like, uh, I don't know, more vulnerable to uh, getting their feelings hurt for that engagement, right? Because that's what's happening in the case of, uh, of this Miranda Sings bullshit. You take advantage of the parasocial attention the affection that they feel, it makes it easier for them to, uh, to be groomed or excuse away negative things that happen or weird things that happen or to overwhelm or circumvent red flags they might otherwise identify. I can't even talk without coughing. This is infuriating. I'm so mad right now. The audio quality for every segment from the stream is just completely shot because I'm, I'm coughing the entire time. The point that I'm trying to get at here is that everyone forms parasocial bonds to someone. And that's normal. That's reasonable in an era of mass media. But if you feel that way, it's very, very important to understand those feelings and what they are. No matter who you're talking to or why, have a realistic understanding of how they perceive you and of how you're reacting to any attention you ever receive. Don't allow yourself to fall into these patterns or get tripped up in this thinking that is so common to people who are victimized by the small portion of content creators who do abuse that parasocial attention. I'm reminded of all those uh, Smash players. You know, they get some attention from an audience of, let's say, mixed ages. They turn a bit of attention backwards. And if you've got an audience of hundreds of thousands of people, guaranteed there will be people in your audience who will fall over and do anything for you. Obviously, if you're a content creator, you shouldn't abuse people in that way. But likewise, if you're a fan of somebody, just Make an effort to engage critically with the feelings you have for them. Okay, sorry, I have to check out. <coughs> I thought I could stream more today. I'm sorry. Oh my god. Let, let it be known that I'm trying, okay? I'm absolutely trying. Nah, I've got to go. I'll try again tomorrow.